And welcome back, we're finally doing another story mission. It's just, this game has so many side quests. You're, you guys are gonna have to get used to this. There's so many side quests in this game. So, uh, I might have to find ways later on to abridge things a little bit. Perhaps, like, crazy marathon episodes every once in a while. Might be a good idea. So we need to take a th find a thesis that was taken by bandits in Ludia Pass. And we get the Buster Sword for it, which I believe carries with it abilities for the soldier. See, I really like soldier abilities. It's a damn shame that you don't have a ton of use for them. Like, there are so many other classes that the humans have that just have abilities that just edge it out by a little bit, or have stat gains that edge it out, so it's... So it's kind of hard to justify mixing something with Soldier. It's a fantastic class and with great abilities, it's just, there's better. It sucks sometimes. Addle and stop, and yeah, yeah, it's the same stuff as before. Okay, we can go ahead and do our fight then. Ah, I remember this map. This is a fun one. I would just assume they're gonna sell it. Smooth. Don't try and sneak up or anything. Mm. Mostly human. Although, the guy who's trying to sell it to, the white mage there, we do have to deal with him. Oh, we're gonna check real quick for things to steal. No accessories on him. I believe there's a quick way to look through these, but I don't remember it. I'll try and figure it out between episodes, probably. I hope I remember. It looks like really basic equipment on these guys. And remember, we steal accessory only, so it's the only thing we can take. Unfortunately, we can't go stealing their armor and weapons. Although, when you learn steal armor and steal weapon, that is when the thief becomes awesome. Oh, this guy has a, a headband. That counts as helmet, though, unfortunately. These headbands are kind of nice this early. What does that teach? I feel like that knife teaches something. Steal gill and counter. Yeah, you can learn counter as a thief, actually, I believe, which is one of the very good thief abilities you want to learn for any human is counter. There are better versions sometimes, but counter's the big one. Okay, we want you because you're big tanky guy, we want our healing. And you know what, uh, for this one I don't think we're gonna need extra healing, so we will take our thief with us because that extra physical might will be nice. And that, that white mage is a priority target. Now we have no archery, and the opponent has an archer way up on high ground, so that is another high priority. Heath there, their leader, is uh, definitely the toughest guy on their team. So we're gonna be careful about him, because he does no counter. Nils here is being kind of an idiot moving way too close to me, though. We're gonna be splitting the team into two small groups here to tackle both ledges at once. We don't want to be constantly doing an uphill battle. And I think the main character can block that up pretty well. Thieves can jump uh, higher panels than most, so they can probably get up and down there. So that's something to keep in mind. Those two can handle the left side pretty well, and we want our healing and Mont Blanc kind of in the middle of the cliff there, where they can easily reach the whole battlefield if need be. 
I think I'm gonna keep my thief over by the, the mages right now. Good, good thing our main character is very tanky right now, so I'm actually gonna have him just wait his turn for healing. Because if we're only gonna take one healing unit on this mission, and it's a pretty beefy enemy team, then we gotta be careful with it, okay? Yeah, they've got really basic equipment is our big advantage here. Okay, I want you to block off where they're coming down from. And you can attack from the high ground here, which I believe gives you a better chance to hit, and you are messing that guy up fast. In fact, we could get a finishing blow there, but you know what? I can have him go up there pretty safely. I'm gonna have him go up there and fight. Ooh, I thought this was gonna be a little bit tougher than this. We're hitting hard. And I'm gonna go here just for a better chance to hit. Very reliable kill. As long as I can hit, of course. Yes! Alright, that's one thief down. And that's good, because the thieves are kind of a threat here, considering they can jump up and down the rough terrain very easily. The enemy soldier might be a bit of a pain. I don't know, he can barely hit or hurt. They're getting really, really lucky with these hits. They don't have a great chance. Cox. I know, I'm four. It's just, it's funny. Sometimes the random generated names make you laugh. Okay, he actually did more damage than I expected. I think it's because he's got a decently powerful weapon for this early on. I think he's the one holding Balrog or whatever it was. Now, this guy I'm a little bit worried about because he can maneuver quickly and counter. So I kind of want to keep the White Mage near the main character. Luckily the main character is my, my tankiest guy right now. And he's probably going to be the tankiest guy we've got for the whole game. Because he starts with slightly better stats and... Their White Mage is so dumb. It is, it is a feat to be that dumb. Leaping down the cliff like that. He is really putting himself in the fray. Ooh. I gotta say, if there's one smart thing he's doing, he's forcing me to heal one of the enemies just to heal my own guy. Luckily, that guy's not hurt, so I don't care about healing him. Yeah, I'm not healing as fast as he's hurting, so I'll need to be careful about that. Now, I kind of do want to pull him back, actually, to attack the White Mage, because the White Mage is a high priority. It's their only healing unless they use items, so we'll do that. Even if I can get him to just keep healing himself, that's better than having him heal the other people. It, judge, get out of here, you're kind of in the way. One thing to keep in mind that I don't think I've mentioned yet, your characters can walk through each other but can't end the turn on each other's spot, obviously. They can walk through each other, but you can't walk through your enemies, so you can't, you don't have to go around your own people. Oh, that's rough. Shot to the leg. No damage, strangely enough, but he can't walk for a few turns. He can only attack, so he's basically a turret right now. It's, uh, it's rough. Okay, speed break is probably a better idea than just fighting here. Eh. Okay, well, I might hit you, so... Crap. Uh, yeah, I'd rather be facing the more threatening one. And I can't steal accessory from you because you don't have one, so I'm just gonna take a swipe at him. Wow, this could be a kill right here. Yes! I was lucky. I get immobilized next to a dude I can still finish off. Alright. I'm pretty happy with the flow of this match so far. I didn't think it would go this well. What are you doing? You're not gonna heal? I don't know what he's thinking. Now I believe the soldier can jump down that. Oh yeah. Okay, they're smart. They're trying to get around me and, you know, get into better position for attacking the mage in the future. Ooh, he's in bad shape. He's taken kind of kind of a beating now and uh, he's in a hard spot to heal. However, he moved his- oh god, I was gonna say he moved his people into a bad position, but I'd have to hit my own guy for a lot of damage to do that. No, that was smart of them. 
That was really smart of them. Oh god, if I can move my main character the way I can drill these guys. My main character's actually got some really good positions he can go into here. Okay. I'm not worried. We can we can handle this. I'm gonna drop a heal right there, that'll get him. And we've still got this one under control. Really wish my thief wasn't mobilized. I want him over there in the fight. Okay. We've now concentrated the fight to just one little area by knocking out everyone in the other areas. It's uh, six on three now, but they definitely have superior position. I can't even walk out of here. So I'm actually going to potion myself here. These potions are pretty cheap to buy, so it's not really a big loss of gil. The way I look at it when using items is I don't like to look at it as how many items I have left. I look at it as using up that much gil. So that expended, what, 100 gil? Something like that. I'll double check. Now, can I actually hit him from up here, or is this too high for me to reach? It's too much of a reach. Not a big deal, I can go here, and can I hit from there? I can, and he can't counter from that height. That's a lot of damage. Got him to less than half health. He still can't move, so I'm just gonna have him wait. And now we can drill him with the magic. I want my most powerful spell on him. I got a really good chance to hit. I can mow these guys down with this one. Yes! Yes! Two of them! Did I only get one ju judge point? Yeah, I should have gotten two for that. I can move again. Alright, now it's just uh, a quick cleanup. One guy left. It's time to get a little bit of revenge. I can attack from down here. It's always better to be on the high ground, of course, but not a huge deal since he can't counter. Ooh, that looked nice! He kind of clawed at him like that? I like that they changed the animations. And I'm just gonna have you use Protect. We don't need it, of course, but experience is always nice. And you can keep facing that way, since it's the only direction he could attack you from. And he decided to go after my main character on the high ground. Oh, he's gonna do a power break? Yeah, he's gonna try and lower my physical attack strength. That was, uh... That would've been smart to start off the fight. And remember, those debuffs are only temporary, but... Still, it would've helped him early on, especially because soldiers are fairly tanky classes. Some of the tankiest. Paladins and Defenders are both uh, a lot more hardy, though. Paladins are defen and Defenders are specifically for being unstoppable physical walls. And I can't really drop a spell from there, so... I guess I could have moved in and attacked from the upper part of the stairs. That would have been smart. I wasn't thinking there. Okay, we'll just finish you off with the Thief. Got him. All right, that went better than expected. I thought at least one guy was gonna go down on my side. Ah, oh, that feels good. It's a satisfying jingle. They're very fun.
Well, I'm the tankiest guy on the team. Alright, we can now see clan information, which is another fun mechanic to the game. And it looks like we got ourselves a new ability. And I like to put the forest right there. Ooh, lots of treasure hunts. We'll do the treasure hunts before we end the episode. If we go to clan, we can see our expertise on the right, which are all those pictures with the numbers. They all start at one. They're requirements for certain missions, you see. We can also see who owns what clan turf, which we don't own any yet. We can see a list of our mission items. We can also see report, which shows us just lists of all the quests in the game, what we've completed and what we haven't, that kind of stuff. You can also uh, use it to quickly check what missions you've already accepted. Let's do a few treasure hunts. And I believe from now on, clans and enemies can show up and start uh, roaming. Soft, by the way, that item gets rid of petrification. So this is around when I can start leveling a little bit off screen. A round shield, that's a good one. I believe that can teach shield, shield bearer to sages. Yeah. You will want to fight at least some clans, though. Because you can get good stuff by stealing from them, and of course, it's always a good time to get ability points and, um, and experience. And if you don't level it all outside of battle, it's gonna be a long time. Another round shield. Those are good, I can still use those. And I believe it was you who just learned another ability. So you've learned your second white mage ability, then I'm gonna start leveling you as a black mage now. So I can get him down, down the path of alchemy. And of course I want him to, instead of having items, to keep that white magic he knew before. That's gonna be pretty important. So we'll give him the rod. He needs to know five black spells, so this rod will teach him the first three. Take his hempen robe, and that shield it teaches it to, it can teach it to fencers, which means that, uh, go over to our fencer. Come on, where is she? There she is. Give her a round shield. And she can take support ability, shield bearer. That's good. And again, a reminder, shield bearer just makes it so if you've learned it and you equip it, then no matter what class you are, you can equip a shield. Very nice to have. So we'll just check the pub again for rumors real quick. Every story mission unlocks some more, I believe. All right, and missions, we have a decent amount of new ones unlocked. A lot of dispatch ones. Dispatch ones I think I'll do off screen. Um, and this is a liberation one, by the way, which means your clan will own the territory after you beat it, which means that from then on, that territory, the uh, the price of getting information for quests in that territory is cheaper. They're very nice to have in the long run. And since we did a story mission, there might be new stuff in the shop, if we're lucky. Mmm, doesn't look like it. Nope. I believe they actually tell us when we enter the shop if they have new stock. Alright then, that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed, and on the next episode, uh, probably going to be showing you what the dispatch missions are, and I'll actually do them off screen, but I'll let you read them and everything in case you're interested. And we're gonna go straight into another side quest fight. So, thank you all for watching, I hope you guys enjoyed, and until next time, have a nice day.